again. Good morning, Mr. Green. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Would you please stop reading my mind? The stock closed at 18, up three quarters. The travel agency acquisition looks good and your message is on your desk. Aren't you even going to ask me about my vacation? I can tell what a ball you had by the look of joy on your face. And the fact that you came back four days early. Three days was more than enough. There I was at this enormous party at Acapulco, and suddenly I realized I'd been at the same awful party hundreds of times before, in Rome, on the Riviera, even in Africa. Hey, take it easy on those vitamins. I've got to fight it, Syl. Can't let it happen to me. What? Can't even read the sports page anymore. Ray Nitschke retires. Willie Mays retires. Willie Mays, so? I remember his first season as a rookie. How could he do this to me? I'm old. Oh, that's right. Today is your 40th birthday. It is not my birthday. I'm 39. I'll be 39 until next year, when I may decide to be 38. Well, as long as George Bland has the will to live, why shouldn't you? Look at all this. Stock reports, financial meetings, mergers. Did you know that I wrote a poem when I was four? Printed a poem. I know it's none of my business, but I've noticed in the last few months that you have been spending a lot of time with corporate business and not writing the column for the magazine. You're right. It's none of your business. Thanks. Well, maybe I just don't have anything to write. How about another poem? You know, one every 36 years? Sorry. You must have had a terrific time in Mexico. A girl beat me at tennis, Harold. No, not beat me, killed me. Not bad enough that it was a person under 20, but a girl. My game's gone, my legs, everything. They're taking over. Who's they? The young people. Do you realize that I'm the oldest man on this magazine? Other than you, of course. Thank you. Why are they staring? Because you're here. Oh. You know, I remember as a kid, I used to sneak into my room and read magazines like ours. <laughs> Said, get a sports car, you'll get girls. They even promised to make you cooler, richer, thinner, taller. You know what? Why? I got cooler, I got richer, I got the car, I got the girls. And I even got taller. No thanks to the magazine, of course. Something's missing, Harold. Things are never as good as you expect. Well, you're just finding that out, huh? There must be more to life. Time is passing. Well, look, maybe you need a new girl. Or have you still got two or three of them on a string? Say, how do you get away with that? Are you kidding? They prefer it that way. There's definitely a new morality, Harold. We tell the guys, wind them, dine them, turn on the right music, create the right atmosphere, uh, dim the lights down low. And while the poor slob's running around the room dimming the lights, they're in the bedroom already yelling, hurry up! Of course, maybe it's good. Girls have fewer sexual hang-ups these days. The only problem is, I am beginning to develop a few. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I'm not really interested in your problems. My heart can't take it. Uh, see you later. Your novel? Yeah. You ever going to finish it? You ever gonna get married? I knew there was a reason we broke up. You're nasty. I thought it was because I was a man who couldn't make a commitment. A man who doesn't even know the meaning of the word love. That too. I'm leaving. Yeah, good night, Syl. So. See you tomorrow. Good night. 
Would you like to have a drink with me and Ron tonight? Oh, no, no, thanks. Hey, you two uh, still going strong, huh? Am I going to need a new secretary? I wish. What are you doing tonight? Oh, big things planned. Housekeeper's going to put out a huge spread, lots of people dropping over, you know. As long as you're not going to be alone. Am I ever alone? Not that I recall. Happy birthday. It is not my birthday. Oh, boy, you can be annoying. I try. <laughs> Done it again. See, I shouldn't be depressed. Not would I have good friends like that. They're all in there right now. I thought it eat the furniture. Sure, <laughs> sure. They've been waiting all this time to surprise me on the birthday that I'm not having. That sneaky Harold. He never even mentioned the birthday, but he knew about it. Oh, he's in there right now. Yes, sir. Here you are, pal. Gee, thanks. Can you make it all right? Oh, I'm fine now. Good night, sir. Hey, they must have hired guys to park the cars and everything. <laughs> Surprise! Michael Green. Any messages? No, Mr. Green. Are you still out? No, I'm home. Alone. No phone calls or nothing? Oh, uh, one message. Your housekeeper is taking the night off because she figures you're out celebrating your birthday. It is not my birthday. Birthdays. Uh, who needs them anyway? What I need is a little drink. Yes, sir. That's what, uh, uh... For the man who has everything. Fooey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. I know what I ought to do. Yes, sirree, I know exactly what I ought to do. And I am going to do it right now. <clears throat> Take a memo to me. What I ought to do is create a new magazine. That's right, for guys over 40. This magazine will tell you how to get old and still be able to do things. Uh, now, instead of having a feature called Swinging Weekend, we'll tell you what you can do when you're over 40, and that's the only thing you can do well. Go to bed, Buster. That's right, and just lie there. Maybe... Maybe never even get up again. <laughs> Probably you can do away with yourself and nobody would even notice. Oh, no! What's the matter with this thing? Oh, it's busted. Use your own key, Cora. She always yell at me. Oh. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. From Harold and the guys at the magazine for the man who has everything. Happy birthday to you. Well, don't I get to come in? Interrupting anything. Oh, no, no, no. I was just talking about suicide. The tape busted. Well, that's no reason to take your life. You don't believe me, do you? Well, you wait till I get this thing fixed. Hey, I know. Don't kill yourself. Why don't you just record your life and edit out the bad parts? A man says he's gonna kill himself, and you stand there joking around? It's either that or scream. I read once in a psychology book that when someone's suicidal, do not panic. Just carry on a normal conversation, and maybe in that way, if you don't show alarm, they won't jump. Or whatever. Who are you? Oh. What are you? I'm Sandy Brown. Michael Green. Yes, I know. I'm your birthday present. It's not my birthday. It's not? No. Well, this is terrible if it's not your birthday. Harold said it You're was. my present? Yeah. From Harold and the guys at the magazine for the man who has everything. Happy please, birthday. Please, please. To you. I have a hangover already, and it's not even morning. You weren't really going to commit suicide, were you? I don't know. I was doing this article, and I sort of got carried away. Could have been an article of great poignancy. How to plan your suicide, a definite first. A definite last. What was that? My stomach. Could I ask you a favor? Certainly. Could I have something to eat? Certainly. Help yourself. Thanks. <laughs> Tuna. I don't know. And peanut butter. And pickles. Whew. The thought of that combination is making me sick, so eating it will probably kill you. <laughs> See? Hey. Hey, listen, I, I, I was only kidding. Uh, hey, hey, can you hear me? Uh, 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 come on. Uh, I know, I know. Whoever this is doesn't know. Oh. Hello. Uh, Stanley, this is Michael. Uh, I've got this girl at my house. You call me at midnight to tell me you got a girl at your house. Who is it? You don't understand. She's sick. Oh, why are you calling me? Because you're my friend. And you're the only doctor I know that makes house calls. I don't make house calls. I'm a dermatologist. Oh, has she got a rash? Well, Stanley, you don't understand. She is lying here on my kitchen floor in a bikini. I get it. It's the play doctor bed, huh? Okay, Mike, I'll be right over. So you're finally inviting me. You want me to bring my bag, right? Yeah, darn, I wish I had a white coat. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll improvise, okay? Stanley, thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Huh? Good evening, ladies. Well, where are they? 
Stanley, you've got this all wrong. The girl could really be sick. Well, well, you mean actually physically sick, not, you know, freaky sick? That's right. Gee, we better call a doctor. You're a doctor. Oh, yeah. Come on, can't you at least take a look at her as long as you're here? Right in here. Hey, listen, I think she could be pregnant. She was making this weird sandwich of tuna, peanut butter, pickles, you know. The bluey, out. Oh, my. Well, she does have terrific skin. <clears throat> You'll have to leave the room. Huh? Well, now that I know this isn't just fun and games, I am a doctor. You're not. Okay. <laughs> pregnant. She fainted from a combination of hunger and nerves. Oh, well, then there's nothing wrong with her, you're sure? Well, she is lying up there in a bikini, a pair of boots, and a big green bow. But then I am only a dermatologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. Yeah, well, thanks a million, Stanley. I really owe you one for this. <laughs> oh, no. No, I am not leaving until I find out exactly what is going on. Uh, well, I don't even know what's going on. I had this lousy day, went out and got loaded. Came home feeling low, and bing, the doorbell rings. And there she is, telling me she's my present. <laughs> Somebody gave you a girl. Well, I... Why? Why you? I mean, you got it all. <sighs> Nobody ever gives me anything. Oh, a bottle of scotch at Christmas, maybe, but... but a girl. Who gives somebody a girl? Stanley. You can't give somebody a girl. It's not allowed. It's not legal. I'm not going to keep her, Stanley. It's only a joke. Yeah. Well, thanks again, old friend. Good night. Yeah. I'm ready. What? Well, I was hired to be your, you know, for the evening, so. <laughs> well, somehow I get the feeling your heart's not exactly in your work. <laughs> oh, I can't. I never did it come here at all. <laughs> uh, no, now, look, don't, don't do that. Uh, uh, you don't have to stay, you know. You can go. Uh, see, just get up and go. Uh, and I promise I, I won't tell Harold, and uh, you can keep the money. Am I supposed to pay you, or did he? Oh, I'm not in the habit of doing this sort of thing, you know. And I'm never going to do it again. In fact, I've never done it before either. So there I was in Kenosha, Wisconsin, feeling like life was just passing me by. What are you putting in the egg? Ah, secret recipe. Ah. I used to cook for myself, you know. Here's a go. Life is passing you by at 20? Almost 22. Oh. Yeah, somehow you just seem to get programmed. You're supposed to grow up, marry your high school sweetheart, have two kids, and drive a station wagon. Just didn't feel right to me. I know the whole world is working on a new morality, and in Kenosha, they still refer to Ingrid Bergman as that woman. Ingrid Bergman? You know what I mean. And don't get me wrong. I didn't want to just go and sleep around. But after Tom, it wasn't that easy to find anyone else. Uh, Tom. Oh, the guy I went with in high school. Oh. And then we got pinned in college. And things just weren't right with him. Uh, what things weren't right? Well, you know. Oh. Not that I had a lot to compare it with. But you see, I broke up with him. He didn't break up with me. And every other guy in town was his friend. So... I came to L.A. to get the experience. Uh, what experience are we talking about now? Mmm. These are super. Naturally. Hmm. Find the right guy. Someone special. Intelligent, warm, sophisticated, but fun. And blonde. I love blonde. And, and discreet. He has to be discreet. Uh, and you just guessed that I was discreet? Pretty risky. Not blonde. No. I lied about my name. It's not Sandy? It's not Brown. It's Benson. Anyway, her friend Harold was looking for an innocent type. You're not a regular hooker. That was the point. 
but with experience. Uh-huh. I lied about that part. At first, I thought, <laughs> no way. But then I thought, this is my golden opportunity. I mean, talk about sophistication. But here you are, someone I ordinarily never meet, the man who has everything. I've even read about you. You're a legend, you know. I feel like I've just died and I'm listening to my eulogy. Uh, would you like something else? Mmm. Well, if you have cake, I love some. Cake? Mm-hmm. Cake. So you came to L.A. to find a man? No. I guess I didn't tell it right. I wanted to embark on a career and learn more about life, become more sophisticated, and find a man. But not necessarily in that order. And it's not just that easy, either. None of it. You know, I found an apartment, but I can't find a job. <laughs> and this city, it's so big and spread out, I don't have a car. <laughs> it's funny. Did you ever have these fabulous fantasies about something you really wanted to do? And then, you're faced with reality. Nothing is like you expected it to be. Yeah. What a great old movie. Yeah, even better than the book. You know, I used to dream about writing a great American novel. You gave it a try once. But instead, I created the great American myth. Monster. The man who has everything. Doesn't exist. Thinking men ought to know that. But I've done my job so well, they don't think anymore. They just fantasize about the life we tell them they can have if they keep buying the magazine. Well, I don't think that's so bad. I mean, I spend hours fantasizing myself. You do, huh? Yeah. Not just about sex, although that's a lot of it, too. But, I mean, life is real, but it should be part fantasy, too. I have a philosophy. Uh, no doubt based on your vast experience in long life, huh? <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, but it works. I think every person should have a dream. And if he works hard enough and really puts his mind to it, he can make that dream come true. Seems to me I've heard that somewhere before. Yeah? Ah, yes. Tinkerbell. Go ahead, make fun of me. But you had a dream. You built an empire from nothing. See? Just takes a little perseverance. You know, you're very easy to talk to. Thank you. But I talk too much. No, you don't. Well, yes, you do. But it's nice. Do you have lots of girls? Mm, play the field. You ever been in love? Yeah, sure, I suppose so. You suppose? You mean you don't know? Well, Do you I... have millions of dollars? Millions? Yeah. No, I... Look, would you do me a little favor? Hmm. Put your hand up every time you're going to change the subject. How old are you? Thirty-nine. Hmm. That's another thing. Hmm. I have this phobia about getting to be 40. I don't know. When you're in your 20s, everybody says, boy genius. And then when you're in your 30s, ah, yes, young man, on the way up. But when you get to be 40, zip, nothing. No more adjectives. Just a man. You know what I mean? I don't know. Old and boring.
I hope it's all right that I woke you. It is after ten. Oh, it is? Well, we were up pretty late. I mean, talking. I'm Sandy, a friend of Michael's. Well, I'm Miss Markin, Mr. Green, housekeeper. Is he here? Oh, no. He, like me, is an early riser. He'll be at the office probably swamped with work. Well, I guess I better get up. Did he, um, leave a message or anything? No. Oh. Look, I, um, know this looks sort of, well, you know, compromising. But it's not. Nothing happened. But my dear, I'm not your mother, and I'm not your conscience. Oh, I, I would be happy to fix breakfast for you, but I don't know what you girls eat. Us girls? Uh, yes. Uh, the others never stayed the night. <gasps> nice meeting you. Uh, oh, uh, haven't you forgotten something? Thank you. about uh, eight. Mm. Uh, no, no, I think it was nine. Then I uh, went downstairs, got a cab. You know how tough it is to get a cab. In Michael, city. come on. Uh, then I went out, had a few too many drinks, went home, and that's why I got the cab. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the girl? Girl? What girl? The present I sent you. Oh, that girl. You're not going to tell me, are you? Yes, I'm going to tell you. She was a delightful little girl, really a sweet kid, and we had a very pleasant evening just talking. And I thank you for the thought. I don't believe a word of it. That's not pretty nice, though. When are you going to see her again? Oh, I don't think I will. She's pretty young, you know. Not exactly my type. But that was the whole idea. Well, I'm not exactly her type, either. She digs blonde. You're impossible. And you're off my Christmas list. <laughs> Mr. Green's residence? Uh, hello, Cora. Uh, let me talk to that Sandy girl, will you please? Oh, she's not here. No, she left just as soon as she got up. I offered her some breakfast, but she seemed to want to rush off. She was probably expected somewhere else. Oh, okay. Well, see you later. Uh, nothing. Not hungry. Miss office? Uh, just a moment, please. There's a Sandy on the phone. Says it's extremely personal. Oh, I'll, I'll take it. Uh -huh. Hello? Hi, it's me. Uh, may I ask you something? Yeah, uh, sure. Could we go to lunch? That's a great idea. I'm absolutely starved. Uh, hold on a minute. Well, reservations for two at La Condesa. Must be the change of life. Uh, do you know the restaurant La Condesa? You're probably wondering why I called you, right? Uh, oh, roll? Mm-hmm. Are they hot? For you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I just want you to know that it's very important to me that you don't think I'm, well, you know, after being hired to be with you last night. Uh, please, don't give it another thought, okay? Okay. But considering all that, everything turned out great. I mean, it did for me. Did it for you? Oh, fine, fine. I'm sorry I fell asleep. Ah, uh, it's usually the man who falls asleep first, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, 
What I really want to say is, A, you were fabulous. I mean it. And B, you've changed my whole perspective about being in L.A. Now, I know you can't get to know someone in one night, but I feel like I know you. I mean, I slept in your bed. And why, why, you why did you grab me? Your face? Thank you. Now, I know it was just supposed to be a one-night thing, but somehow, I feel close to you. I'm glad. Oh, good. Because what I want to ask... Hey, listen, and you can say no if you want. I mean it. Uh, excuse me a minute, Sandy. Darling, why didn't you say hello? I wanted to tell you that those nude photographs of yourself that you sent in, they're going to work out perfectly for the centerfold. Do you know that I didn't recognize her with her clothes on? <laughs> I don't believe you said that. You are terrible. Why? It's the old bitty not the eavesdrop. <laughs> for the lady, oh. hamburger la condesa. And for Mr. Green, eggs Benedict. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, what I was trying to say is, you're the first friend I've made since I've been here. And I was wondering if, well, would you be my friend? Yes, I think I'd like that. Terrific. Now, I don't want anything from you, materially or anything. I understand. But what I do want is I, I'd like you to be my advisor. You see, I've always wanted to write. And I've taken courses in college and stuff like that, but I've never known anyone who wrote a novel before. Half a novel. Well, half a novel. Would you teach me to write? Well, I guess I could give you a few pointers, yes. Hey, I got an idea. Hmm. What? I could do an article on you. You know, country girl comes to the big city. As a matter of fact, you could write it. Under my supervision, of course. Really? Really. Why are you so surprised? Well, I guess I am surprised. This is fantastic. This is the greatest day. I mean, look, I found you. We're having lunch in this fantastic place. You know, one more thing and it would be complete. What's that? Could I taste your eggs, Benedict? You take that one. I'll have this one. Oh, good. Mom, it's so exciting. He is absolutely perfect. He's the one. Yes, Dad, I'm eating enough. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I lock my doors every night. Of course I'm serious. He's the man I want to marry. Now, let's see. You'll need some more paper. Are you sure this is all right? Certainly it's all right. I own the joint. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> hey, in that case, could I have some of those black felt pens? Black felt pens. Some of the red ones, too? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so nice of Harold to let me use his office like this. You know, this is very good. Really? Really. I made a few cuts, but basically it's very good. Much better than last week. You're still a little wordy. You know? I know. That's because I talk a lot. It takes me more words to say things. <laughs> well, we'll work on that. Don't you think I'm getting a little thin spot right back there? Please, let me worry about that, huh? It's my job. It's my head. Well, I finished these. Want to sign them? Yeah. Uh, did, did Sandy call in yet? Yes, twice. Make a note. Remind me to call her. Don't you think she's pushing it a bit, writing at night, looking for a job all day? Why don't I get her a job? No, she wants to do it all herself. But it is amazing that a girl who has graduated from college can't get a job without secretarial skills. Why don't you do an article on that? Please, I've got all the articles I can do right now. You know, every time something new happens to that kid, she thinks of another article we could do. Not just real life, but dreams. <laughs> she has a feature-length dream every night, in color. I dream in color, don't you? I don't dream. You're kidding, you must. Well, if I do, I don't remember. Sure you do. You're just blocking it. Everybody dreams. The thin spot, George. Out. Your friendly slave driving editor. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry I haven't answered your phone calls, but I've been awful busy the last couple of days. You got a haircut? Yeah, how do you like it? It looks great. What's all this? I'm going home. Home? Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought everything was going so well. Well, it's not. A, I can't find a job, and B, I got evicted. 
just evicted? Yeah, the landlord wanted to raise the rent. I can't even afford to pay for it now. It's okay, I hate this place anyway. Oh, no, 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 Sandy, don't cry. No, it's okay. This is the employment agency. It says I'm overqualified. What kind of a job can you get if you're an archaeology major? You an archaeology major? Yeah. I love fossils. All my theories. They just don't work. I mean, just because you want something to happen doesn't make it so. I'm discouraged. I'm lonely for my friends. And you've been great, but I can't be with you all the time. I just can't make it. Can't? Is this you saying can't? Tinkerbell, the girl who believes in miracles? Peter Pan would be very disappointed. I'm sorry. I would have written when I got home, honest. But I just was too embarrassed to tell you face to face. But I'm sorry about your article. That's right. I never paid you the money for the rights to your life. We have a contract, you know. What contract? Well, it's oral, but it's binding. Uh, look, A, you can't let my readers down. And B, you can't let me down. I'm counting on you. Oh, you are not. Well, then don't let yourself down. Look, give it one more month. You can't go back to Kenosha without achieving any of your goals. One month? Yeah. I don't blame you for being lonely in this place. So why don't you move in with me? Michael! It's strictly platonic. You're going to have a whole wing to yourself. But that way I won't have to wait for your daily check-in calls. Makes me feel like your parole officer. Well, I don't know. I mean, it would look so bad. Oh, my, my, Ingrid. <laughs> All right, but what about your housekeeper? I mean, I don't think she likes me. You're crazy. She loves you, thinks you're a doll. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping us. Come in. Oh, hi. Hi. You, uh, getting moved in all right? Yeah, pretty much. What's that, the article? Oh, no, I'm writing my parents, telling them all, well, not all about what's going on. <laughs> what is this? Oh, that's Egbert. He's pre-Columbian. I take him with me wherever I go. Isn't he perfect? <laughs> That's another one of my bad habits, anthropomorphizing, making inanimate objects animate. I know what the word means. I was an English major, you know. You were? Well, it's probably the best major. Ah, change of subject. <laughs> Tom said I used to do it all the time, and it drove him crazy. What? Anthropomorphizing. Oh, a Tom? Yeah. Oh, Tom, Tom, the fellow back home. Yeah, <laughs> one advantage, though, is you're never alone. Even a death can be your friend. <laughs> Well, anyway, do you ever have a dog? Uh, no, I... I'm not raising my hand on that one, because that sort of follows. Yeah. And plants. Do you realize you do not have any plants in this entire house? I don't. And plants make a place very cozy and warm, and you can talk to them, too. Scientific studies prove you should. It certainly is nice having an archaeology major around the house. You know so many interesting things. Mm hmm So long, Egbert. Bye. Bye. <laughs> job in an ad agency. I start tomorrow. No kidding. Really? That's terrific. <laughs> well, young lady, this definitely calls for a celebration. Step this way. What kind of a job did you get? Well, I am a junior copywriter. It's only a beginning job, but this way I can find out if I want to be a senior copywriter. A senior <laughs> copywriter? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Definitely champagne. <laughs> Here we are. Wait till I tell Harold. He keeps asking about you all the time. Hey, um... He doesn't think, you know, since I'm living here... Uh, 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 that's Kenosha talk. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, I straightened him out about you the first day. It's just that he feels sort of, uh, responsible for bringing you into my life, you know. Am I in your life? Oh, well, look at that. I, uh, I, I broke the cork. Well, maybe I can find a corkscrew. Or... Well, now, where is that stupid thing? It's all right. It's a thought that counts. I just wanted to tell you about my job. Good night. Oh, 
Miss Markin said that you used to always bring girls here all the time. I, I hope you're not not bringing them here because I'm here. I can always stay in my room. Uh, thank you. I'll bear that in mind. Okay. Good night. They're my gift for the house. Now that I'm earning money, I wanted to. I will not have them in my kitchen. They bring bugs. They do not. All right. I'll take them to my room. You probably have a brown thumb anyway. Next, you'll be bringing animals into this house. It's a dog. A dog? Then who is going to take care of it? I will. Don't worry. You won't have to do a thing. Uh. We just got him from the pound. Saved his life. Isn't he cute? What's the matter with her? I haven't the slightest idea. Here. Hold him. Hmm? Hold him. Oh, uh... You don't like the dog? Well, don't be silly. Of course well, I like the him. dog. Hold him. All right, I'll hold him. Yeah, come here, fella. <laughs> yeah, nice little puppy, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, say, he wouldn't, uh, uh, would he? He might. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe you. And then I said, am I in your life? And you should have seen him. He was a nervous wreck. He started doing all sorts of numbers. <laughs> you better be careful, though. What do you mean? Well, you're very open and direct, and that's wonderful for everything else, but not for Michael, yet. He's too afraid of becoming involved, so what you have to do is work it out so that he doesn't know he's becoming involved. Then when he's involved, you close the trap. Sounds like hunting for rabbits. Yes. Well, the only thing that runs faster than a rabbit is a perennial bachelor. <laughs> do you love him? Yes, I do. Well, then you better start to make a plan. And I am with you. So is Harold, by the way. Really? That's nice. Well, we all like Michael. It seems you're very good for him. The only problem is little boys don't always take what's good for them. <laughs> You look very handsome. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, how do I look? Do I look okay? Terrific. I'm so excited about the date. It's really nice of Sylvie to fix me up. She says he's gorgeous. Oh, well, I've seen Larry. I, uh, I guess you could call him good looking. I wouldn't exactly call him gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> I'll get it. Hi there. Hi. Ready to go? Mm-hmm. Night. See you. Don't miss any parts. I don't want to peel, you know. Sandy, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? Oh, sure. Bob Benner, Mr. Benson. Green. Michael Green. Aren't you Sandy? No, and I'm not her uncle or her brother either. See you later. Nice to meet you, sir.
been in a terrible mood all night long. Oh, well, I'm, uh... You keep looking at your watch. You've been doing it ever since we got here. It's two o'clock in the morning. Well, maybe it's time for bed. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. It's just that uh, someone who's staying here isn't in yet. Who's staying here? I thought that wasn't allowed. Oh, uh, well, this is different. Uh, this girl is uh, sort of like my ward. <laughs> a girl is living here? Oh, she's just a kid, a baby. How old? 22. I'm 24. Jim. The guy from last night. Oh. Boy, Sylvie and Harold must be doing a great job of selling me. All those neat guys. Well, don't I get a report? You're supposed to keep me posted for the article, you know. Well, okay. You were right about Larry. Cute, but not smart. Hmm. Jeff was a little too showbiz, and Bob was always on the make. And Jim so uh, far... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's back up to Bob there. What do you mean? Well, you know what I mean. He wasn't an animal or anything. He was just gregarious. But he didn't turn me on, that's all. Wait a second, wait a second. Uh, what I was really wondering was... Uh, Am I making it with any of them? No. Well, I needed to know for the article. Is that the only reason? Certainly. I'm so sick of hearing about that stupid article. I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, you were getting a little jealous. I guess I hoped you would be. Boy, you really come out and say what's on your mind, don't you? Yes, and you ought to try it sometime. Have fun at the zoo. planned with Jim. I did. What happened? He got sick, so he says. I think he just got sick of my saying no to you know what. It's our third date. But why do you have to do it today? Um, by the way, happy birthday. For me? <laughs> oh, Michael! <laughs> hey, let me help you. Yeah. something I can keep forever. You know, I hate gifts that you can use up like perfume and flowers, but this I can keep the rest of my life to remember you by. <laughs> Not that I need anything to remember you by, but well, it's just perfect. How'd you know? Uh, Sylvia suggested it. Oh. Hey, I got an idea. Hmm? Well, I don't have anything planned for today, so why don't I just take Jim's place and we'll go do whatever you two are going to do. Would you? Sure. Oh, I'd love it. What were you going to do? Go bike riding. Bike riding? You'll love it. I bet you haven't been on a bike in about a million years. What, what do you mean, a million years? <laughs> Nut ripple. Oh, coconut banana. What are you going to have? 
Uh, vanilla. Vanilla? Certainly. That's the worst thing I ever heard. There's nine million flavors here, and you're going to have vanilla? You've got to try a new one. You have to. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 chocolate. Chocolate. I don't believe it. What's the matter with chocolate? It's boring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've always heard you never forget how to ride a bicycle. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. I wish I had forgotten. You oh. had a good time. Admit it. Okay, I had a good time. <laughs> I had a great time. Do you know it's the best birthday I can remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're back. Shall I fix dinner now? No, thanks, Cora. We've already eaten. Oh, where's Pumpkin? Outside somewhere, I suppose. Outside? You left him outside all alone. He could have run away or gotten hurt. That nasty little dog chewed up my slipper, so I put him outside. Well, dogs chew things, Cora. I must say that ever since that girl has come into this house, it's been topsy-turvy. And the last straw is that nasty little dog. Either he goes or I do. Oh? I'll be very happy to give you references, Cora. <laughs> Where you been hiding out, huh? Oh. Uh, now listen to that. Huh? Next thing you know, you'll have me talking to plants. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hmm? I did a dishonest thing. Not really dishonest, but just not totally honest. See, Jim didn't get sick today. I canceled him. It was my birthday, and it was very special to me, and I wanted to be with you. So I planned it this way. As a matter of fact, I've planned a lot with us. Oh, you have, have you? Well, that figures, Tinkerbell. What else have you planned? Well, as a matter of fact, I fantasized the whole thing. We'd go to the marina, have this great day, come home, sit by the fire, Drink a little wine. And... Examining me like that, I feel like one of your fossils. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, come on, have some breakfast. Ah, uh, I lost my appetite. For food. <laughs> You're staring again. Say something. Do you like kids? <laughs> you all right? Oh, yes, I'm Flip right. your arm. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Yeah, the water. Well, water, okay. Yes. Okay? Oh, I'm fine, yes. <clears throat> Uh, Sandy, mm -hmm. we're going to have to have a little talk. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Uh, last night. Yeah. Wasn't it wonderful? Yeah, it was terrific, but... Uh, How's your breakfast? Oh, very good. Uh, what was I going to say? The eggs oh, cooked you... hard because that's the way I like them. Do you? Oh, yeah, fine, fine. Good. 
Now you have to tell me what you like so then I can cook all your favorite things. Uh, Sandy, now, I have more experience. Good, you do the cooking. <laughs> I don't mean about cooking. I mean in life. Well, that's fine. I prefer a man who has more experience in yeah, well, life. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I make you happy, but... Happy? Michael, I'm ecstatic. You know, uh, you never use superlatives. Uh, well, you I'll really ought to let yourself go more. Uh, Scream, right. shout, get enthusiastic. Yeah, I will. I will. You even get mad. Well, how can I? You keep interrupting. I'm sorry. And now, A. A. You're not really in love with me. Mm -hmm. You just think you are. You know, it's very common for a girl to fall in love with the first guy who really turns her on. And I'm flattered you chose me, but... Uh, but B. B. I'm all wrong for you. I, uh, I don't go with people. I just don't get involved. Is that it? Yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. Good. Now, eat your eggs before they get cold. You were supposed to pick me up two hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a couple of thoughts for the novel. Fantastic. That's great. Look, I don't want to interrupt you. Have you eaten yet? No. Oh, I'll go get us some hamburgers. Great idea. Keep right on working. I love you. Love you. O'Donnell hurdles one tackler. Still in trouble. Dodging. Picks up a blocker. That's Turner, I think. Honey. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, boy, what a run. Hey, come here. Watch the replay. Uh, honey, I'm writing my parents about us. And, well, I don't know what to say. You know, my mother's sort of old-fashioned. Oh, what do you mean, no first down? That referee is a thief. Michael, yoo-hoo. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Well, in my hometown, people went together, got pinned, got engaged, and then got married. But we don't fit into a category my mother could cope with. You know, living together. So, what can I say? Uh, anything you want. Well, I can't say we're engaged. That's for sure we're not pinned. <laughs> How about going together? That's it. Michael, is that okay? Uh, sure. Anything you want to say. You mean? Huh? You mean what? That we're going together. I mean, you just said we were going together. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we're going together. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, I don't think I'll write him after all. I'll call. You can talk, too. Yeah. Well, uh, couldn't we wait till halftime? Hand off the reader. Across the 30. Put out of bounds. The 30 in my heart. How's it been going? I haven't seen you in weeks. Well, I've been really busy. Michael and I are together all the time. I even got him to go grocery shopping. <laughs> Can you believe it? No, that is incredible. I oh, know. Listen, he's still in Harold's office. You want me to buzz in again? No, no. Um, I don't want to nag him. <sighs> is anything wrong? Phil, things just aren't that great. You know, everything was fine, and then... I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm almost through to him. I feel really close. And then wham, I come up against this wall. There's a place where he just won't let me through. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You think maybe it's other girls? No, no, I don't think it's that. Maybe you two ought to talk about it. I'm a little afraid of that. But you're right. The sooner the better. You gonna see him now? No. I'm gonna wait till tonight. When I get home from class. Chicken. You're right. <laughs> well, that memo's being typed downstairs. I'll see to it that someone brings it to your house later tonight. Great. How about going out tonight? Just the guys. Oh, I don't think so, Michael. I'm kind of tired. Oh. Where's Sandy? At a class. Class? Oh, don't tell me. Uh, gourmet cooking, right? No, not that bad. Writing. Oh, writing. What's the matter? You're not her teacher anymore? Uh, she heard about some professor who's supposed to be a poetic genius, so she ran over to sign up. She's very impressionable, you know. You want to talk about it? 
talk about it. What's there to talk about? All right, Harold. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm too old. For what? For her, for settling down. And maybe I'm not capable of a permanent relationship. Oh, I get it. You still want to see other girls. No, no, it's just that, the... well, I'm feeling uh, married. How can you stand it together all the time? Going shopping together, checking out at the supermarket together, checking in with her, remembering occasions. Do you know that we've had five anniversaries already? First time we met, first time we went to lunch, the first time we made love. I think it's kind of cute. Sandy's a very romantic kid. She even planned to get me. Of course, I suppose I should be flattered by that. Well, you were complaining about the kind of chicks you were used to being with. Now, along comes someone who's enthusiastic and refreshing. Why, she's the best thing that ever happened to you. I know. And you still want to see other girls. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm coming. Hi. Well, hello. For you. Oh, thank you. Uh, won't you come in? Don't tell me you're moonlighting as a delivery boy. What's the matter? Don't we uh, pay you now? Oh, well, you remember me. I don't think you would. Of course I remember you. I hung around the office until those were done. I wanted to be the one to bring them to you. Well, loyalty like that at least deserves a drink. Uh, won't you sit down? Well, it be. Scotch on the rocks, please. One scotch on the rocks, coming up. How long have you worked at the magazine, anyway? Too long without getting to know you. What How charming. Thank you. Hi, honey, I'm home. Boy, that professor might be a poet, but he sure isn't a... when I first came here. I'd stay in my room if you just tell me you were having another girl. Uh, now, look, Sandy. Uh, Sandy, uh, couldn't we just sort of, uh, well, talk this thing over? You know, if I were into that body language stuff, your arms would tell me that you have a very closed mind. Uh, well, I'm sorry about what happened, but nothing happened. Then why are you sorry? Well, I don't know. The girl just stopped by with some notes from the office. Now, you always say you want me to be more open, right? Right. Well, okay. In all honesty, now, nothing happened. But it might have if you... Hadn't come in? But no, if you hadn't been expected to come in. Now, nothing did happen, but the thought did cross my mind. Are you seeing other girls? No. But you want to? Well, the thought has crossed my mind. Well, if you have any room left in that mind for another thought, try this one. We're supposed to be going together. Uh, now, that's what I mean. I, I feel like I'm back in high school. Going together. Those, those words aren't even in my vocabulary. Boy, I'll say. What do you want to do? Break up? Now, there's another one. Break up. Well, couldn't we just sort of take a little rest and still sort of see each other? Uh, Take a little break. What is this, a sports event? You want time out? No, I... Uh, I mean a break in our relationship. There is another girl. No, there isn't. Now, if there were another girl, you could handle that. That's a definite. What I'm talking about isn't quite so concrete. It's just that I feel tied down. You know, other girls that I've dated haven't been quite so jealous. Couldn't we approach this in a little more mature way? I guess I'm not like other girls, Michael. I don't want to be. Because I love you. 
And this situation isn't working out for me either. Because I'm too old-fashioned. I want a house and kids and a husband. Do you? Well, no, I, I don't want a husband. <laughs> oh, look, Sandy, I... I know what you mean. I'm very fond of you. Goodbye, Michael. What do you mean, goodbye? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you want to move out, okay. But this isn't goodbye, it's only... Time out? No, Michael, this is goodbye. I don't know how to take a rest period. I wasn't very good at taking naps in kindergarten either. With me, it's either going together or breaking up. So I guess this is breaking up. Fine, okay. Fine, I, I was just trying to make it easy on you. As a matter of fact, I was going to be the one to say let's break up, but I just uh, didn't want to be the one. You. You. You are a 40-year-old man who can't admit it. Huh. Go ahead, laugh, play games. You always do, even with yourself. Now, you wanted me to break up, but first, you had to prepare yourself by making yourself think that I was the one that was going to do the breaking up all along. We well, you know you need help. You're a very sick person. I'm sick. I'm sick. Oh, no. I'm not the one who talks to plants. I don't go around wishing on stars, crossing my fingers, living in some kind of dream world. Not me. Go ahead. Criticize me. I may be silly, but you don't even know how to say I love you. I do so. I say it all the time. Uh-oh. -uh. You say love you. That's different. That's with a small L. You don't know how to say it with a big L like an I love you. You can't make a commitment to anything, not even breaking up. Now wait. Now you wait. I, Sandy Benson, have tried everything I know to get through to you, Mr. Wall, and I failed. So I, Sandy Benson, for the first time in my life, give up. You can't give up. I quit first. Oh, I didn't know it was a contest. Pumpkin! Pumpkin! Come on, baby! Come on, Pumpkin. We're leaving this place. Good! And you're supposed to call a dog Rover or Spot, not Pumpkin! Funny, I thought you buzzed. Well, I didn't. Oh, uh, as, uh, as long as you're on, uh, call Sandy at her office and uh, 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 tell her to get those plants out of the house. They're, they're bugs all over the place. Oh, well, that's going to be a little hard to do since she's quit her job and they don't know where to find her. Why didn't you tell me that? Well, the way you've been acting the last couple of days, I didn't think you wanted to know. Well, I don't. Then you also don't want to know that she's on her way back to Kenosha today at 3 o'clock. Uh, which was 10 minutes ago. Plane to Kenosha. Well, I chartered a plane. I'm rich, you know. 
Don't try to impress me. Tried to work on the novel. I uh, just couldn't seem to write. I. Well, you know. I'm glad you're here. Now, that's what I love about you. It's so easy for you to say exactly what you feel. Love? Did you say love about me? Like, and I love you? Yeah. I love you. Big L. Oh, Michael, I love you. How old are you? 39. And a half. Good enough. <laughs> uh, well, don't you think you better get your stuff and move back in where you belong? The, the plants are getting yellow. Oh, no, honey, that's too much water. Oh. Guess I'll have to move back. I owe it to the plants. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, husbands and wives should live together under one roof, right? Uh, did you say husband and... Yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Hmm? Look at me. Now I've got a wife, a dog, and plants. <laughs> What's happening to me? Now you're the man who really has everything. <laughs> <laughs>